You are the embodiment of one shot, one tag, and you don't believe in waiting for the enemy to come to you. You are good at spotting threats that no one else has seen and taking out threats that no one else is able to. You are a sharpshooter. Hey, you scum! Suit up! If you have not already watched the Units, Roles, and Loadouts Primer or the General Advice video, please pause this video and go watch them now. Links will be in the description. The goal of sharpshooters is being able to take out threats that no one else is able to, whether it be an issue of range or of accuracy. You're also able to take out more specific threats, and you're you should be good at identifying which threats are the ones that need to be taken out. It really is a, a mindset as much as a loadout. Obviously your blaster is what's going to allow you to do that, but your ability to identify which targets need to be taken out is really what makes the sharpshooter as valuable as they are. Now sharpshooter is really more of an individual concept. You wouldn't generally have a squad of sharpshooters. Now something like the command column might have a dedicated unit of sharpshooters or have you know, a large number of sharpshooters, but the smaller squads are likely to only have one dedicated sharpshooter, just like they would probably only have one dedicated heavy, to be able to fill that role that's less often needed, but when it is needed, is incredibly valuable and cannot be underestimated. Obviously, the relatively low FPS cap of most HVZs being at 120, some 130, is going to limit how powerful of a blaster you can build. But with the right tuning, you can get just about any blaster down to that, and there are definitely blasters that are going to give you more accuracy and more range, even at that power level. So let's take a look at a couple of those. The Long Shot. The Long Shot has been around since 2006 and is still one of the most po uh, popular platforms for high-powered blasters. This one obviously has a scope that doesn't actually magnify for most people, the scope isn't going to be useful enough to be worth the trouble. That's not true for everyone. I'm looking at you, Bradley Phillips. But at 120 FPS, that's definitely the case. Uh, but they look neat, and why not? The Prophecy. Just gorgeous. The Sentinel is good, duh. A half dart slingfire. Believe it or not, this thing does hit 120. The Talon Claw. Compact, but powerful. And of course, the mighty Caliburn. They can be gotten down to 120. It's really neat when you get them that low because you have to have such a light spring load that it's easier than priming a stock Alpha Trooper, which is just weird feeling. Now all of those were obviously magazine fed, though there was a variety of both pump action, side prime, and lever action. And because you're more of a dedicated target rather than engaging multiple targets as quickly as possible, the mechanism of your prime doesn't need to be the most efficient, it just needs to be one that you enjoy and that, uh, that, that works. So whether it's lever action, side bolt, pump action, that I'm not, much, not as concerned about because you're going to be taking your time and picking your shots anyway. The blowgun, which like I said, despite being low tech is actually surprisingly effective in, in both range and accuracy. Rate of fire obviously isn't great, but that kind of depends on how quickly you're able to reload it. And since you are a sharpshooter, you're not really trying to have a high rate of fire, you're more worried about being accurate. The downside is that most HVZs don't allow them, and shouldn't allow them in my opinion, for safety concerns. The first is that it's actually very difficult to regulate how hard they hit. How hard I can make this thing go if I absolutely try my hardest is going to be different than somebody with either larger or smaller lung capacity than me. So they don't like allowing them because they're, they can't be sure that it's hitting under the 120 or that you're not going to give it to someone else who might be able to hit higher with it. But the real concern is that you're going to have something up against your face in a game where people are sprinting at you with their hands out. And if somebody comes up from behind you and you spin around with this and they slam this down your throat, that is going to ruin everybody's day. <laughs> so they're generally not allowed in HVZ. But in PVP, I would actually recommend that everybody have one of these because it's a nothing piece of technology. It is a simple piece of pipe at the simplest. This is obviously the really fancy worker one with the 3D printed bits and all of that. Uh, but you could easily stow this anywhere in your gear, have it on a sling, what have you, and allow 
anybody to immediately switch to that sharpshooter role. I mean, you could be heavy infantry, light infantry, scouts, sock ninjas, whatever, but be able to flip into a sharpshooter very, very simply. But like I said, HVZs generally aren't going to allow them and I would not recommend them even if they do. Now your harness is gonna vary depending on whether you're running full darts or half darts. A lot of the big events do now allow half darts, but not all of them. The, the advantage of half darts is obviously we know them to be more accurate at this point. They also take up a lot less space. You can carry twice as, men, twice as many half darts in the same amount of space as you can full length darts. The downside is that they are always gonna be less common. And therefore you're running a type of ammunition that if you run out, you might not be able to borrow from someone else in your squad. The ammo mule might not be carrying half darts um, because half carrying multiple types of ammunition ends up being inefficient if it doesn't end up being needed. However, there are some ways of getting around that. If you're using a blaster that is actually capable of using either full or half darts, like the Caliburn, uh, I recommend the EZ um, magazine adapter because it will take both talons and katanas and you can easily remove it and then be able to use full size magazines from whoever's got spare mags. Uh, other option is if you're using the worker full mags that take half darts, your blaster is also already inherently able to take the full size magazines as long as your bolt is the right size for them. The downside of these is of course they take up twice as much room as these. How you have them arranged, like I said, is up to you. They will fit in regular AA K pouches. You can fit four of them in one, but if you start not you know, dumping them into a dump pouch or something, you eventually have them kind of loose. Obviously you can get specific mag pouches for them. There are ones that can be printed and then just use elastic to hold them down. You can get um, submachine gun magazines. Those will also fit these just like the AA K pouches will fit full length magazines. So as long as you can carry enough magazines for however long an engagement you're planning to be in, how your specific harness is set up is entirely up to you. Let's talk about sidearms. Obviously it makes a lot of sense for your sidearm to take the same ammunition as your primary. So if you are running half darts, one of these is probably, again, a really good option because it gives you the higher rate of fire, the semi-automatic fire in case you get rushed or something happens and you need to be able to fire a lot more rounds than you would be able to with say your, your really heavy bolt action or your lever action or what have you, you have that option. Downside again, of course, you still aren't able to fire the more common ammo. So you might consider having a hammer shot. I'm pretty much always gonna recommend a hammer shot. Again, so that if necessary, you have something that's able to firing the more common ammo type, regular darts. And it still can be used one-handed, which means if you needed to be able to, you wanted to stay on target or what have you, didn't want to drop your primary to have to, you know, fish it back out again, you could quickly pull this and pop off a couple of shots and then go back to, you know, your, your long arm, assuming you're carrying a long arm. Because there's nothing to say that your primary long range accurate blaster has to be a big rifley looking thing. There are people who have built incredibly accurate single shot pistols or even magazine fed pistols. I'm looking at you, Chris Kataya. Uh, so you can go with a, a, a more low profile look, which might be really good for something like recon. Uh, you could get into one of the recon units and be their dedicated sharpshooter or marksman with this smaller blaster. Now there does exist a specialist form of sharpshooter that I will refer to as the Omega Marksman. I will make a special video on what Omega Squad is, but a Omega Marksman is a sharpshooter who is specifically geared towards and dedicated to tagging or neutralizing super zombies, either through their gear or through their playstyle. For gear, you're looking at things like Mega Burns, long range, more accurate blasters that fire the higher forms of ammunition. You also might be able to make a fairly accurate rocket launcher, but rockets take up an awful lot of space and they tend to be fairly random. Things like a Mega Burn are much more likely to be effective. For play style, it would involve using your regular designated marksman's rifle, but in a way that is specifically geared towards neutralizing the super zombies. At End War 2020, the super zombies didn't take a special ammunition to take out, but there were special effects that happened when you hit them. They had boomers where when you hit them, they stuck a staff on the ground and they now became a spawn point and the zombies just had to run around them to respawn. So if you let them get closer to your column before somebody tagged them, there was now a spawn point at the least, the shortest I ever saw was about five feet 
from a column, a boomer went off. And so there were zombies just circling, and we were all having to just pour ammunition into them as the column moved away from the boomer. We, luckily, I don't think we lost anybody, but it was really close. The other thing were tanks, which when you've tagged them, they were only stunned for five seconds and then could start moving again, and specifically targeted whoever had hit them last. So when you tagged them, if the column was moving, they were only down for five seconds, but if you had a marksman who, who was specifically aiming for that one tank and just kept re-hitting the tank as the column retreated, the column might actually be able to get some distance on the tank. Alternatively, two marksmen could set up opposite of a tank and play tank pong, where I hit the tank, so now the tank focuses on me, and then the other guy hits the tank, so the tank focuses on him, I hit the tank, so the tank focuses on me, and you just have a tank going back and forth. Those are things that a, uh, an Omega marksman might specifically look for, because again, as the sharpshooter, they are not going to be as heavily engaged on the front. They have that opportunity to keep their eyes out and specifically be looking for where's the super zombie, as opposed to just having to look at where's the nearest threat take them out. Look for that greater threat. That's what really makes the Omega Marksman a separate kind of subclass that I felt was worthy of mention. So to sum up, the sharpshooter's job is to identify and eliminate the most dangerous targets on the battlefield, whether that be neutralizing super zombies in some way, or just taking out leadership, or whatever target you've determined to be the most dangerous, or that your commanding officer, they, if a commanding officer comes up and says, I need a sharpshooter, that target, take it out, because that zombie's taken out a whole bunch of people, or they're just really wily, or they're the leader of the zombies that's organizing them into the charges, because it is incredibly demoralizing when the leader of the horde is getting everyone all riled up and on three, one, two, three, charge! And he gets as far as on three, a pop! Because it will take a second before they manage to pick a new leader to lead the charge. And if you then pop that guy and pop the next one, eventually people aren't going to want to volunteer to be leading the horde because they know that the sharpshooter's just gonna take him out. And that kind of psychological warfare is invaluable both disrupting their command structure and demoralizing them is incredibly valuable on the battlefield. And that's the kind of thing that the sharpshooter is able to do. And that's why it's useful both to have a dedicated sharpshooter who is truly taking their time and finding those targets as opposed to targets of opportunity, but also having anyone in your squad being able to. So if you have that, that one-shot pistol that you've got tucked in that you can make those shots if called upon, Really, having that, the ability to fill that role, that sharpshooter role, is incredibly valuable. All right, I look forward to seeing you on the field of battle. Bangarang!